Howdy folks, and welcome back to XCOM 2 with the mighty jingles. When last we left our band of intrepid heroes, and Ike, um, we were still trying to track down the locations of the various different Advent black sites, trying to get a grip on what exactly this Project Avatar was that Advent was up to. While we've been waiting for leads, we haven't been idle. We've been expanding into new territories. We've been establishing radio relays in those new territories to boost the amount of supplies that become available, and the monthly guerrilla supply drops, as well as make it cheaper for us to expand into adjoining territories. We've also been hard at work in research. In the Proving Grounds we've been researching new types of ammunition. Our scientists have been hard at work researching new data mining techniques that are going to be essential for future mission success. And best of all, we finally managed to develop some armour that doesn't completely suck. Predator armour. It's not the best stuff available, but it's better than the shitty Kevlar you start the game off with, and more importantly, it gives all your troops additional carrying capacity, so as well as those all-important grenades, they can also carry medkits. And, well, if you've been following my progress so far, you'll agree that medkits are very, very useful. And we still have enough supplies left over for Chief Engineer Shen to make either arc blades for the rangers, um, additional Gremlin Mark II's for the specialists, but no, we want our big guns. We're gonna go with the mag cannon for jingles. Some people might say I'm overcompensating, but to them I say bollocks, you can never have too much firepower. Finally, and most importantly, I need somebody to take the blame whenever I make a dubious decision that leads to half of my squad getting killed or injured. Step forward, Billy Warren, long-time contributor to Circumflex as World of Tanks livestream. Billy is always there when you need somebody to take the blame for the team sucking. <laughs> Hashtag blame Billy. It's a thing. Seriously. Billy's not going to be available immediately, but the next time I recruit fresh troops, he should be available on the roster, and then we can stick him into the squad and blame him when everything starts going wrong, because that's what Billy's for. In the meantime, we've got a mission to do. The Doc has developed a piece of technology called the Skulljack, and what we're going to use that for is to hack into Advent's neural network that it uses to control all of its troops. In order to do that, we're going to have to get within melee range of an Advent officer and stick this thing in his head while he's still alive, and yes, that is exactly as dangerous as it sounds. The first time I actually tried to Skulljack an Advent officer, it all went horribly, horribly pear-shaped. You see, you, you'd think that having to get within melee range of somebody and stick something into their face sounds like a job for the close quarters combat specialist, the ranger. You'd think that, and you'd be wrong, because skulljacking relies on your hack statistic, and that's specialist territory, so for this mission, Quickie Baby is the one with the skulljack. Now, Ike took an injury on a previous mission, and because he's a big fairy who cries and blubs like a little girl at the sight of his own blood, his willpower has now been reduced. He's suffering from a temporary condition known as being shaken. The way to remove that condition is for him to complete a successful mission, get a kill, and not take any injuries. So I'm going to have to nursemaid him <laughs> and hold him by the hand and hope he doesn't cry too much in this mission. The good thing is, once a soldier recovers from the shaking condition, their willpower doesn't just get restored, it gets improved. So. Having a soldier succumb to this shaken condition is a pain in the arse in the short term, particularly if you run across any, any enemies like sectoids that use mental control abilities. However, providing you're careful and you look after the soldier who's suffering from that condition, you can get yourself a potential long-term boost out of it. Now, this mission is just a simple, straightforward supply raid, but we're keeping our eye open for any Advent officers that we can get Quickie Baby to use this Skulljack on. Nothing detected so far, the squad is still in concealment. Roger that. Moving everybody up. Just waiting for the first sign of trouble. And it's while I'm moving everybody up that once Jingles finishes his move, and I put him into Overwatch as well, it's the alien turn. And Jingles, Overwatch. here's movement. movement. It's close. Right, so we know there's a patrol down in that direction. Sircon is in a good spot. Put him on long watch, and then we're going to start moving everybody over in this direction. Everybody in position, alien turn again. It is a patrol, and they're heading in this direction. Now the good news is, there's an advent officer amongst them, and that's exactly what we want for Quickie Baby to use the Skulljack on. But the bad news is, he's not alone. There's a shield bearer with him. But, shield bearer or not, the officer is the guy we're after. The Advent Captain would serve our purposes nicely, if it can be disabled. 
Yeah, thanks, Doc Tiger. We were actually paying attention during the mission briefing. Now, shield bearer. Bad news. They're called shield bearers because they have the ability to give everybody there with an energy shield. And the energy shield has to be battered down before you can actually start doing damage to their health. Or kill the shield bearer and everybody's shields go down with him. So, ideally, we want him dead before he can put the shield up. And then we're going to deal with the advent officer at our leisure. So, with everybody set up, it's down to Sircon to take the shot. Come on, Sircon. Nice. Good shot. Five damage. Obviously, the shield bearer also has one armor, but five damage is enough to leave him on one health. Now, of course, our cover's blown. Everybody knows we're here. But that shield bearer is so incredibly dead. Quickie Baby's up next, and he is actually in Skulljack range of that Advent Officer, so I'm going to go for it. Skulljacking is great. Not only does it look absolutely gruesome, but it's also a guaranteed one-shot kill, providing your hack attempt is successful. Of course, Quickie Baby's an electronic warfare specialist, so he's got a 100% chance of getting the successful hack and accessing the Codex network. So, woohoo! And also, bonus! A small cache of intel recovery. Hooray! Uh, hang on. What? What's going on? The hell is that? What? Commander, that appears to be the codec responsible for safeguarding the alien data stores. We'll have to neutralize it if we intend to recover the data. Understood. Weapons hot. We've got our target. Oh, you think? This wasn't in the mission briefing. You could have mentioned this while we were on the event. Oh, what the hell? Right. Okay. Can't afford to let that shield bearer get a shield up. And he's just outside of frag grenade range. Uh, Overwatch for Ike. If the shield bearer makes a move, but the shield bearer's move is probably going to be put up a shield, and that would be bad. He's outside of melee range for Rita. Lousy chance of hitting. No, missed. Um, running out of options here. Just got jingles left. Right, Jingles. Uh, suppression's no good. Uh, firing range isn't great either. Oh, actually, hang on. Jingles can move and then fire. Right. Unfortunately, the shield bearer's in cover. But that codex thing isn't. Have some! Oh, in your face, misses. <laughs> How do you like them apples? Excellent work, Commander. It appears some physical remnant of the Codex was left behind when it dissipated. Hopefully, it will provide some insight into the alien's ongoing plan. Doc, you talk too much. I... Yes! <laughs> he had something like a 41% chance of hitting, but hey, <laughs> it's stupid, but it works. <laughs> of course, we've been rumbled by another patrol. Circumflexes, Overwatch. What have we got here? A muton and a sectoid. Okay, right. Um, the sectoid could be nasty. Ike is still suffering from reduced willpower. But they're probably not going to go to what? Well, Quickie Baby's the closest target. And he's awfully exposed over there. We're going to move him into some kind of concealment. And he's got a shot. He has a shot. Come on, my son. Oh! <laughs> All right, well, we don't need to worry about the sectoid anymore. Just the muton. And Quickie Baby's picked up another promotion. Right, Ike. Uh, we really don't want to get Ike injured again. Where can we move him to? We'll move him to there. It's only a couple of steps, but he's in cover, and we can put him on Overwatch. Right. Rita. Uh, where can we put Rita where she'll be safe? We don't want to bunch everybody up here, because mutons like to throw plasma grenades. We're going to put Rita on Overwatch. Jingles, still got two shots left in the mag cannon. Um, there's some decent... Yeah, that'll do. Doesn't quite have the range with the grenade launcher, but we're going to put him on Overwatch as well. So, four of our... And he's run away. Uh <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> Well, if he had tried to attack, we had multiple people on Overwatch. But uh, turns out he's just as big a pansy as I can. <laughs> and he's run away. The mutons are supposed to be the elite alien shock troops. 
<laughs> he ran away. <laughs> he obviously didn't like the odds. All right, anyway, quickie baby, Overwatch. Uh, Ike, up to the limit of your move. I can't believe the Muton ran away. That's just shocking behavior. Ike on Overwatch. Rita, still got three shots left and a mag rifle. Going to move her all the way up because she's kind of getting lost at the back there. And nothing has been spotted just yet, but we know the Muton's down there somewhere. So... We're going to put Jingles on Overwatch as well. So four of my five squad are on Overwatch if that Muton comes back. Nothing happened. Sircon's turn. Again, you're going on Overwatch. Quickie baby, hunker down behind that uh, waste container. And we're going to put you on Overwatch. Where the hell did that Muton go? Is he still running? Well, anyway, I spent a couple of turns moving everybody up from concealment to concealment making sure I'm careful to put them into Overwatch, trying to find out where the hell that Muton ran away to. And before too long, I find out. See, he wasn't running away, he was just advancing in a different direction. And he's brought some friends back with him. That's an advent shield bearer. Rita's an Overwatch, and she misses. And it's not just an advent shield bearer, there's a sectoid with him. So, we've now got three of them to deal with. But hey, it's alright, everybody's on Overwatch. Here they go. Jingles! Misses. Quickie baby! Misses. But it's alright, it's alright. Ike's on Overwatch as well, on high ground, with a high ground shooting bonus, and he misses as well. I swear, sometimes the gunfights in XCOM remind me of this. Well, it's not a complete disaster because that was just the reaction fire overwatch phase. It's still my turn and I've now got five chances to take these guys down. So, Sircon, come on. Sniper rifle. Take that shield bearer down. And Sircon's all, relax guys, I got this. <laughs> Headshot, critical strike, shield bearer taken down. And because Sircon used his first action to shoot from higher ground, death from above kicks in and I get to also move him after having taken a shot. Right, anyway, shield bearer down, muton, and sectoid. Quickie baby's turn. Now I haven't moved him yet, so I still have the option of moving him first, but from that position he doesn't have a very good shot at either of them. And he doesn't quite have the range with a frag grenade, so I'm gonna keep quickie baby in reserve for the moment. Rita, do you have a better shot? No. No, not with your rifle. Um, however, with your melee weapon, we're going to go for the sectoid, because she can kill him in one go. And mutons, and there goes the sectoid, and he's dropped some loot. It's dangerous attacking mutons in melee range. They've got a nasty habit of counter-attacking. And that's some very, very nice loot, particularly the Illyrium core. I'm going to need that for proving ground projects later on. Now, back to Quickie Baby. If this goes wrong, I've still got Jingles and Ike, who can take shots at this Muton. And he's now in frag grenade range. Alright, that's going to take his armor out, as well as do some damage. And there it goes. So, two damage, but he's now lost his armor. Ike? Oh, he's actually got a good shot from here, because he's on higher ground. At oh, Ike! I take back everything bad I ever said about you. <laughs> Yay! Mission complete. Hurrah! No injuries sustained. Flawless mission. Finally. And we got ourselves a new record. Seven average damage per attack. And the most damage dealt was Quickie Baby, and that's actually quite surprising. I thought with all those critical uh, sniper shots that Sircon was taking, he would have actually dealt the most damage, but... Nope, Quickie Baby it is. You can almost smell the rivalry between them, can't you? And even Ike looks happy. <laughs> it must have been a good mission. Anyway, let's get these conquering heroes back to base in time for tea and medals. The squad made it back whole and the aliens paid the price. Great work, Commander. Thank you, Shen. Now let's get Captain Quickie Baby promoted. Threat assessment? Yeah. Is alright, I suppose, but covering fire is much, much better. 
Overwatch normally only triggers on enemy movement during the Overwatch phase, but when a specialist has the covering fire ability, it triggers on any enemy action, so that's what we're going for. Now then, Doc, we skulljacked that officer like you wanted, but then this thing turned up. Commander, please thank our troops for completing what was surely a difficult task in acquiring the Codex Brain. We'll begin work on it as soon as possible. And while we're all congratulating each other, there's even some more good news courtesy of movie voiceover guy. The creature your troops defeated here was clearly of some importance to the aliens, Commander. Let us hope that the recovered remains prove equally important to our own efforts. So, killing that Codex and recovering its brain has actually set back the Avatar Project's progress and that's bought us a little bit more time. And I plan to put that time to good use by researching new technologies, expanding facilities on board the Avenger, and get the troops sent on as many side missions as possible to earn as much experience as possible and get promoted as high as possible before I can't let things slide any longer and I have to start going after those Advent Black sites so that when I do, I'm in the best possible position to make a success of it. But let's not lose track of what is actually important here. While it's all well and good expanding operations into new territories and researching new equipment, new armor, new weapons and so on and so on and so on, we still need somebody to take the blame when I inevitably screw up and everything goes horribly, horribly wrong. And that, boys and girls, means it's time to recruit Billy Warren. <laughs> Don't be shy, Billy. It was only a matter of time. You knew you were never going to get away with it. Get your ass in here. You can give your heart to Jesus, but your ass belongs to me. So, Billy's finally recruited and, to his credit, very keen to take the blame for everybody else's mistakes. But we want to ease him in gently, so if the game could give us a nice little supply raid mission or something like that, we don't want him having to shoulder the responsibility for catastrophic cock-ups right from the start. And so, of course, what happens? Yep, Billy's virgin mission with a squad of ultimate badasses is a retaliation strike. <laughs> I swear, I am not making this up. It couldn't have been worse for him if we tried. And that is where we're going to be carrying on in the next episode of XCOM 2 with the Mighty Jingles. Oh dear Billy. <laughs> Join the army, they said. See the world, they said. It's a man's life, they said. I'll bet you're regretting signing up now. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, and Billy, if you're watching this video, and I know you're going to be watching this video, don't worry. What could possibly go wrong? We'll look after you. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a sailor. <laughs> catch you next time, folks.